So we're going to start with a representative volume element like this, which basically is a steel material that has got a lot of voids distributed within it. I'm going to apply periodic boundary condition to this, as well as incorporate doctor damage into this model so that at the end we're getting this sort of result we show you the classic periodic boundary condition deformation as well as the doctor damage if you're interested in this then sit back and relax as we get started with this video so we're starting with a representative volume element of this steel material so what you see here is a steel material which i've already created it's a hundred by hundred steel material and it's got these small holes that are distributed within it which is what i'm calling a void which you normally have to determine by knowing the void fraction of this material what we're going to then do first once we have this is we're going to explore how to mesh this model so if they'll click on this uh, place and then we'll see it so if I, so we're going to use something that looks like nine across and then we can just mesh the structure okay so this is our mesh representation of the model one final thing we need to do in order to get it ready for damage is to look at this so if i select that i want to make an explicit element library is what i'm going to use and then somewhere here you've got your place string but whenever when you come into the material you need to specify the element deletion to be on and then i need to specify a maximum degradation of 0 0.98 so this basically means like eight percent of the element stiffness once it's approached then that element will be deleted from the model so that you begin to see the classic element deletion that shows you the damage evolution within the material so these two are absolutely important in undertaking damage in a model that's right so let's think about the material so i've already created a steel material but we, and then the, what are the properties of this steel material so first the density of the material is 7860 kilogram per meter cubed the elastic properties would be 210 e to power 9 which is gigapascal and that's the Poisson ratio in terms of elasticity i've already copied across the parameters for elasticity in this material so it's starting from 310 e to power 9 and this is the sort of result that we are expecting so you get this plasticity progression in a strain hardening sense and so this data we copy across into this model and this is all what you get here the other thing that we find here is the doctor damage so we want to do a doctor damage so mechanical doctor damage and that's how you get it and i've already incorporated it here so we're using a doctor fracture strain of 0.31 a stretch triaxility of 0.33 and a strain rate of zero a damage evolution also associated with this is a displacement of failure of 0.48 using a linear softening law if you really want to see how this were derived in more detail then i made this video which again is similar to this kind of bit it's showing you more detail how you can go about creating this then we need to create a section so i'm going to call this my steel section and then i link it to that and then i'll do a steel a section assignment select what i want to assign and assign it to those properties so then the next thing is the assembly so you double click here so we'll create the instance so that instance is there the next thing we're going to do here is to create a set of all corner nodes. So I'm going to call it my corner nodes. So we're going to use that subsequently. So I'll press down shift and then select this one by one. So we've got only the nodes at the corner. That's what we'll have. So that forms a set of all the corner nodes associated with this system. So, so we'll create a step, which I'm going to call my loading step. And it's going to be a dynamic explicit loading step because we want to undertake damage in this model so this is fine we need to create a history output because i need to track a few things associated with this model so corner node history output associated with our loading step and then i can set a specific the specific corner nodes that we want and that will be our f1 our f2 u1 u2 coordinate one and coordinate two so basically the reaction force in the x and y direction displacement in the x and y direction of all those corner nodes and their coordinate position in x and y direction because again we're going to subsequently use that to generate our stress and strain data and we're only finding that with respect to that corner nodes alone so the other thing then is to sort of specify our boundary conditions so i'm going to say this will be at x back ruler so we're filling fill the back which is an initial boundary condition so i'm going to get only those two corner nodes because we're going to apply boundary conditions so we just need to specify these two corner nodes pressing shift and i'm constraining it in one direction and i'll do the same thing y 
base a cellular support so again i select that and i select this pressing down shift done i constrain it in the two direction and then so remember it's only those corner nodes that we are constraining and as well with this corner nodes we are going to apply our extensile load so the extensile load and it will be associated with the node at this end that's what we are going to apply our node and in the x direction the system is 100 so if we make this 15 so we're looking at 15 percent displacement and because we are working with an explicit model we need to specify an amplitude so we create the amplitude so i'm going to call this my amplitude curve and so what we basically need to do is to tell it how the amplitude will need to evolve so that's what we are looking at so we'll just copy this value and then we'll go back here and paste it there so we've got the amplitude specified and we just need to select it here so with the loading we've got amplitude we've got everything set up but one more thing that is missing here and that is the periodic boundary condition and with periodic boundary condition what you're trying to do here is that you're linking all these edge nodes to have a corresponding displacement with this front node the top nodes with the back nodes here so that there will be a cyclic deformation associated with this system so unfortunately within abacus there is no way of doing this and so you have to trust a software that can actually do that and that's where a software that i've written which is called pvc 2d chain comes in if you're interested in getting hold of the software please look at the description section of this video where you see a link that helps you to get access to that code one of the things that this code needs is for you to create an input file which is basically this stage of the model where we are you take it and then bring it into that code and then it would then apply periodic boundary condition with it that's what we're going to do so if we go at the end here we're going to say okay um so this is the name that i give this code okay so right here we're going to tell it to write an input file so the essence of writing an input file is that they want to create an IMP file, which is a model that will bring into BBC to the gen. So how do we know where that code is? So I'll look at set working directory and I'll take this link. So I'll copy that link, control C to copy. So if I paste it in my window, right at the top end here, you can see the code is right there. So I'll just right click and click copy. So I'll copy that code. So I just want to pause a bit just to encourage you. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe to the channel so that when the sort of content I'm making get made, you'll be one of the people that will be recommended this video. It does really help me to know about the community that I'm building who are watching this video. So please do subscribe to the channel. I try to focus on this sort of videos where I teach about Dr. Damage, about periodic boundary condition and the general whole concept of how Abacus can be used to create series of videos to support students. So please, again, if you have any particular video that you want me to make, please tell me in the comment section. I'll be happy to make those videos. Thank you and let's get back to the video. Now, where does PBCJ live? PBCJ lives inside of MATLAB. So it's a software when you download the software, it will come with these two files, a readme file, which tells you more about the code and a PBCJ 2D, which is executable that will do the application of periodic boundary conditions. So I'll paste that model input file that we've created, which is the original model without periodic boundary conditions. So it's the input that we're going to use here. So I'll right click here and click run. So what it will do is that it will then ask me which model am I using, so which is this one. So at the end of that, once it's generated all that, there will be a folder which will be here, a jobs archive folder. So if you open up that folder, and what you will see here is that there is there is an updated input file. So of which if we open it outside of MATLAB. So basically this is the input file generated. So the key thing is that somewhere at the end here, you've got this star equation that shows you the updating which is what makes this boundary condition aware. So I'm just going to copy the link for that and then we're going to import that model into Abacus. So we're going to say, okay, find back into Abacus, import this model. So I'll specify this model as an IMP file. So it brings now the updated input file with periodic boundary condition associated with it. And so that's what we have here. So we've got this model now brought back into Abacus in a readiness to run. And if we, the key thing is that if you look at the constraint equation here, it basically tells you those star equations that make the system periodic. So once we have that, then we can go ahead and create the job associated with, with this.
So once we finish the simulation and then you look at the result that we're getting from this periodic boundary condition analysis, animation of it, so it shows you how the system is building up, up to a point, you then begin to see the, the, the fracture of the material in, somewhere in, in the middle here. So if we just slow it down, so somewhere around here, you see the periodic boundary condition behavior showing nicely what's happening here. You can already see some of these elements beginning to delete because they've met the failure criteria condition and then if you go so even though it started somewhere around here actually the area of weakness for this simulation is somewhere there so it's forming around there it's also forming around there and then if you move all the way then you find effective fracture right at that region so you get now a classic fracture of a periodic boundary condition system so you still have the periodicity reflected here both there and also at the bottom of the bank end but the model has failed even in doctor fracture. We can also change and look at the plasticity in the material. I like to look at the plasticity because this is a point where you begin to see yield approaching. So the material somewhere around here is beginning to yield. The element here is the one that sees the most stress history, the one that has approached the yield stress of this material. And so it's already quite dim. So you would expect this to be damaged. However, if you continue running this, you'll find that that's also the first element that's felt. Some of the other elements are felt at the same time. And then you continue all the way until you get to the end where the material seems to experience complete failure as expected. So we can look at the shear stress. So if we look at S1 in the 1, 2 direction, because so you can see the contribution of shear stress in the material. And then it gives you, again, the buildup of shear stress right around this region. Heightened shear stress means that the system begins to fail before those other regions will take over. In fact, it's because of the shear stress, that's why those elements begin to fail. The final thing we're going to do then is to see if we can visualize what is the stress history in this material. So, and when we are setting up the model, we asked for a setting history variable. So if we click here and track those history variables, so what we see here is if you Select this, press down shift and select this and press down shift to the end. So remember the only one that we're interested in is the one that is on the corner node. So if we plot this, it gives us essentially what is happening in the matter. So with those stresses, you can then operate on it to get stress and strain data. If you want to see how exactly you can do this for this sort of material, then this is the video that I'd like you to look at. But what we see here is essentially that there is this elastic behavior, then yield happens and then there's a bit of doctor damage until eventual failure in the material. So we need to take all this data, operate on it using a principle of virtual work and you get the result that you want. So if you want to see how this is done, again, look at this video where I showed you in detail how this is done. If you want to see just a simple classic boundary condition where you apply load on the edge, then this is a video that I want to see. If you want to really understand the principle of doctoral damage, then this is a comprehensive video that I've made and I do encourage you to have a look at it. Thank you for your interest and I'll see you in the next video.